This is my attempt at, as simply as I can, explaining the difference between the dot P dot S standard deviation formulas in Excel, um, and in turn also the, the standard deviation with no suffix at the end. Um, because I have been using just this standard deviation formula with no suffix at the end with no real reason for why I did that other than it seemed like the easiest one. Um, but it turns out that's incorrect and there's a very specific use case for each of these. Um, it's probably easiest to explain if we know what the P and the S stand for. The P stands for population whereas S stands for sample. And with the standard deviation with no suffix it's the same as dot S because that is the most typical use case and that's when you're using a sample set of data versus the entire population. And to hopefully explain the difference between those two, let's look at this data set that I've created over here where we're taking the cycle time of various runs in a mock warehouse. And if this particular warehouse has 30 runs in an entire day, and we want to know the standard deviation of the cycle times for that day, we have all 30 runs accounted for. So that standard deviation would be of the population, or the, I'm sorry, we would be considering the population, so we should use the standard deviation of the population formula. However, if this particular warehouse has a thousand runs in a day, but we only take a small sample because we don't have either enough time or manpower to take the cycle time calculation for each one of those runs, and we only take 30 examples, or 30 samples of that whole thousand, we would use the standard deviation sample to produce the standard deviation of this data set. And the reason we're doing that, um, or the, I'm sorry, the difference between those two things is basically the denominator that you're dividing by in your standard deviation calculations. In the population, you're dividing by the entire population figure, or in this case, 30. Whereas if we admit that it's a sample, we're going to divide by 30 less 1, which will make the number slightly bigger. And basically what we're saying there is, you know, we, we know that we don't have the full data set, so we're probably a little bit off. We're going to bump this down um, to a slightly smaller number to make the standard deviation bigger to account for the fact that we, we know less about the entire population. So let's take a look and make sure that we're that Excel produces numbers that make sense for us here. And if we take it of the population and we see we get 1.056 and if we admit that it's actually a sample we're admitting we know less about it so it should be a bigger number which we see it is in fact a bigger number just barely but it is and as I mentioned before, if you don't use a suffix at the end at all, you get the same number as the sample formula. Now let's actually run the entire equation out long form to show what Excel is doing with these various formulas. So the first step is to determine our average cycle time, which is 2.5, and then we want to take the actual cycle time of each occurrence less the mean. Now when we do this we're going to get some negative numbers here so we eliminate those by taking the square root of all of these. So now we can run the variance formulas and then ultimately square root them to create the standard deviations of the samples of the sorry the population and of the sample here so let's do that here. We're going to take the square root of the sum of all of these numbers and divide it by the entire population or the count of runs. And we see we get the same exact number here. And if you're not as comfortable with the count formula, we could simply know that we have 30 runs, so we could type in 30 here and we get the same number. Now if it's the sample however, we want to do the same thing except we want the denominator to be 29 and not 30. So we take the sum 
of all of these to perform this part of the variance function formula. And because it's under the square root, we'll ultimately produce the standard deviation. We've taken the count less one. We want that entirely under the parentheses. And we get the same number as we have for standard deviation dot s. And again, if you're not as comfortable with the count function, if we simply put in 29, which is the 30 minus 1, we should get the same number, which we do here. So hopefully this explains the difference between the dot p and dot s versions of standard deviation. Um, finally, as a quick little add-on, you may have seen an a at the end of each of these as an option in the formula drop-down when you type in standard deviation. And the A is actually telling Excel that you have either blanks or text in your data. And you'll have to do a little more research because um, each of those, um, the A changes the value that it, it uses for a text or a blank data, data source. Um, in most cases, hopefully you wouldn't have text or blanks. So you're just going to use the traditional .p or .s. Um, but if you do have text or blanks, um, you're going to have to do a little more research because it's a uh, more specific use case, but it's highly unlikely that you'll be using that. So hopefully this helps um, solidify the differences between these formulas for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope this helped.